This video contains spoilers from the HBO hit series, The Sopranos. Viewers, please be warned, the spoilers are about to begin. On June 10th, 2007, that is what millions of fans watched, many believing their cable had gone awry. Seven seasons that built up to a Journey song cliffhanger conclusion. Many fans were extremely disappointed in the ending, but I wasn't one of them. Indeed, I absolutely loved the ending, and at that time I thought it was crystal clear that Tony had met his demise. Having rewatched the entire series several times since, including once very recently, I've always become more confident in the conviction that Tony was indeed killed in that final moment. There are three key clues that I believe support this conclusion. All of these clues came in the seventh and final season, or technically speaking, season 6B. The first clue is in the episode Soprano Home Movies, which was the season 7 premiere. I mean the season 6B premiere. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? There's your friend in there, on the wall. <laughs> The second clue is in the episode Stage 5, the second episode of that season. Quattro gatti. Ah, I didn't know what happened until after the shot was fired. And then the third and final clue happened near the end of The Blue Comet, which was the episode preceding the series finale. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? There's your friend in there, on the wall. <laughs> Taken together, these three clues strongly support the idea that Tony was indeed whacked. Just as Meadow was running to meet the onion ring-eating family after her parallel parking fiasco. And what a fiasco that was. Even though the evidence strongly points to Tony's murder, I like that the ending still left things open to interpretation. But even there, at the end, Tony was in a really bad spot. Soprano was having major money issues, mainly because the only decent earners came from the cursed crew. Richie April met his demise at the hands of Tony's sister Janice. Then Gigi took over that crew, and he died while taking a dump. Then Ralph Cifaretto became the new leader, and he was subsequently murdered by Tony because of his insurance scam regarding Piomai. And finally, Vito Spatafor was killed after he was outed as a homosexual, and during his final moments, Phil Leotardo was literally hiding in the closet before emerging to shove a cue stick up Vito's... Hmm. He's a come-from-behind kind of guy. By the end of the story, Tony saw his opening to remove his junkie protege, Christopher Moltisante, and by the final episode, in arguably the most powerful one-two punch in TV history, Bobby Bacala was murdered while purchasing a pricey model train set, and Silvio was incapacitated in the very next scene. All of Tony's key players were gone, except for Paulie, who was always a shitty earner. And Patsy was there, too. Tony's glorified crew was in shambles. And making matters worse, Carlo had just flipped and was testifying to a grand jury. And of course, adding injury to insult, Melfi had finally come around to making the decision to abandon Tony. And this left him a big mess as well as evidenced by this scene. My mother was a borderline personality. So what? He's mentioned your mother very briefly. Very difficult woman. Undermining. So even if you don't believe Tony was murdered in that final second, which I absolutely believe he was, but even if you don't think the clues add up, Tony was already in a terrible spot and he had basically already been defeated. Phil Leotardo succeeded in damaging Tony's glorified crew beyond repair. Phil had already won. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the real problem with The Sopranos ending. And it all dealt with this guy, Butchie. Tony wanted our attention? Fine. He got our attention. Now we wipe him off the planet. You're a man, Phil. It's saying a lot nowadays. Whoa, whoa! Sit down. Sit down. Easy. 
In the first episode we see Butchie, he encourages Phil to have Tony whacked. Butchie wants to take Tony out, but Phil is reluctant to kill a boss. In that same episode after Phil suffered a heart attack, Butchie gave Tony a hard time when he checked in for a visit, and then Butchie taunted Tony as he left. We later see Butchie looking all enthusiastic when he explains that Tony was nabbed for a three-year-old gun charge. Butchie was portrayed as one who was extremely loyal to Phil Leotardo, especially when Phil reflected on the fact that his lasting legacy is the name Leotardo. Butchie was then directly involved in the murder of Doc Santora when Phil had a change of heart about heading the family. When Phil had his big celebratory bash, Butchie was by his side. Then after Coco sexually harassed Meadow, Tony was on the warpath, which led to heightened tensions between Tony and New York, and especially between Tony and Butchie. When Phil finally comes around and makes the decision to take out the leadership in the Jersey family, Butchie is the one entrusted with orchestrating this three-pronged attack on Tony, Silvio, and Bobby. All of the available evidence suggested Butchie hated Tony, and that Butchie was extremely loyal to Phil. And yet, after Phil essentially crippled Tony's entire organization, Butchie suddenly has a change of heart and negotiates with Tony in good faith. Butchie gives Tony his blessing to kill Phil, even if he won't reveal his whereabouts. But Tony already had that covered because of his friendly dealings with Agent Harris, who had already gone on record saying he never liked Leotardo, and he'd previously warned Tony of several threats from Leotardo. That's the real problem with the ending. Tony was finished. He was done. The New York family had just bitch-slapped the Jersey family into submission. But for some inexplicable reason, Butchie turns on Phil and sides with an already defeated Tony Soprano. Even Tony's own guys were losing faith in him as Tony remained hunkered down in hiding. But Butchie turned on Phil, made peace with Tony, and then Tony even leveraged Butchie for killing his sister's husband. But this still makes no sense to me, because Tony had no leverage here. Butchie had all the leverage, because Tony's family had already been crushed like a grape. Butchie always struck me as a counterpart to Silvio, and Silvio proved his loyalty to Tony when he killed Bert, who was suggesting a change in leadership on behalf of Phil's family. Butchie was portrayed as someone who I thought was even more loyal to Phil than Silvio was to Tony. Now, I understand that in the Sopranos world, there are ever-shifting loyalties, but usually those loyalties only switch when it's advantageous when there is self-serving leverage. Take, for example, the incident in Season 2 where Junior was on the fence about turning against Tony for a second time. Junior expertly waited it out, and when Richie Aprile was unable to sell the idea, Junior knew he'd be better off with Tony. He couldn't sell it. Richie? I'm better off with Tony. What are you looking at? I'm in awe of you. Now, I suppose you could argue that Butchie wanted the top spot for himself, but that kind of works against all of the evidence we were previously provided regarding what Butchie was all about. He never seemed to want a leadership role. And indeed, he wasn't even in the running after Phil passed on the job and Doc Santora initially stepped in. Butchie is the one thing about the ending that's always bothered me, because his betrayal of Phil felt like a betrayal of form. It's just not in line with what we were led to expect in a world of selfish criminal scumbags. Don't get me wrong, The Sopranos remains one of my absolute favorite television series I've ever experienced, and I thought the ending was otherwise sensational. And for the record, I know I'm in the minority here, but I also thought Game of Thrones had a wonderful ending too, even if Martin never finished the books. He made millions of dollars. He's sitting on his ass. So what do you think about Butchie's betrayal of Phil Leotardo? Please let me know. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. Louis Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. Luca Brazzi. Luca. Whatever. What's different about you? He has no eyebrows, Tony. Who did this? Mm. Not bad. Mix it with the relish.
<laughs> what are you, a vegetarian? You eat beef and sausage by the fucking carlo. Good thing for me, then, that your book don't mean no gods to me. What's yours is yours, Paulie, but what ain't is anybody else's. Isaac Newton invented gravity because some asshole hit him with an apple. Well, what are you thinking? Julio to start. Julio, two, but you should have shame. Oh! Back up, take it easy. Put it down on Darken Station. Listen to this prick giving orders. You got some balls, my friend. You violated my wife's honor. Ralph slept with Jenny? Who knows who is Leonardo da Vinci? I do. do. Maddie? Yeah, he wrote the Da Vinci Code. No. I'm here now. I'm telling you about it now. That's the second time I'm playing catch up with you. What the fuck are you talking about? The lawn cut. I'll ask for 200 grand. 200 grand for insulting my wife. What's next, come on? You get the fuck up for a million? Grandmother's house. It wasn't my fault. If I had a quarter for every time I heard that since you learned to talk, I'd have a private jet on 24 hour standby. What'd you do that for? Screwing around. On your mother's birthday? And the freshman dean said there was no point in coming back. With your father in a coma. No, I didn't tell Dad. In your grandmother's house. On your mother's birthday. What kind of likeness is that? If they were great artists, they'd be in a museum. I appreciate your thoughts. You saying what I think you're saying? I didn't say nothing. Listen to the sounds. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? There's your friend in there, on the wall. What's <laughs> got the nature. I didn't know what happened until after the shot was fired. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? There's your friend in there, on the wall. <laughs> He made millions of dollars. He's sitting on his ass.